Hi, and welcome to the Take Permission Podcast, where I'm committed to helping you to take control of the one life you've been given by teaching you how to take permission. You know what you don't need? More tools. You know what you do need? You need the right tool. So Seth Seth Godin is my writing hero, and he uses a totally unheard of word processing program. It's called NISUS, N-I-S-U-S. And he posts his blog on TypePad, which is like, like nobody, nobody, I mean, they're sure there's some people on TypePad, but, but Seth, my hero, using NISUS and TypePad, really? So today we're going to talk about actually seven programs that you should consider using if you want to write more, if you want to write faster, and if you want to write better. Here we go. All right, welcome to today's episode of the Tech Permission Podcast. Again, my name is Andy Traub, your host. Thank you so much for joining me, whether you're watching me on video, uh, on YouTube, or you're listening to me, whatever you're doing, wherever you are, I appreciate you tuning in. Today, we're going to talk about the seven best programs to help you write more, faster, and better. And if you listen to this at the right time, uh, I'm actually going to be teaching a class where I show you these different programs, do a screen share of what I like about them. And they're very different uh, visually. So I would encourage you to tune in. You can register for that class for free by going to takepermission.com slash writing tools. That's takepermission.com slash writing tools. No spaces, no dashes, all that stuff. So we're going to talk about seven programs that are going to help you write more, faster, and better. And let me just list them off first. Okay, we'll get right to it. Some of these you may have heard of, some not so much. The first is a very, very, the most basic one, and this is for PC or Mac. On a PC, it's called Text Editor, I think, or note, Notepad. And on a Mac, it's Text Edit. And this is just the default built-in text editor. It You cannot, I mean, maybe there's like a super, super old 1992, 85 something program that's more basic than these, but this is like super Super basic word processing. So text edit, notepad. The second we're going to talk about is Evernote, which I love. Love me some Evernote. The third is Google Docs, offline and online. Grammarly, maybe you haven't heard of. It's probably the it's probably the most expensive of all of these we're going to talk about uh, for good reason. Byword, B-Y-W-O-R-D. Love me some Byword. Ohm writer, you have to say it like that. Ohm writer, because it's supposed to be like Zen. It's like that's why it's O M M W R T E R. Then you've got the Big Daddy Scrivener. I mean, this is like hefty. Like people write some big, serious books in Scrivener. We're going to talk about that too. All right. So with that, let's go ahead and dig right into the tools. And we're going to start with Text Edit or Notepad. So. I have three ways that I sort of score these versus how much of a distraction-free writing experience is it? The distraction is just so prevalent in your world and in mine. And so these programs have to put us in a distraction-free writing environment. Second, how well do they, do they integrate? How, how well do they work with other programs being offline versus online? Do they work on mobile, uh, different platforms? And then the last is the value. You know, some of these cost some serious dough. How much? Uh, are, what, what's the value? Not how, what's the cost, but what's the value? Those are different things, right? So, like a brain surgery might cost a hundred thousand or two hundred thousand dollars, but the value is very high because you only have one brain, right? So let's talk about this first. Uh, under these three different uh, scores, distraction free. So if we talk about a text editor or notepad, uh, it, I, I'd give it an eight out of ten. It, it is. It is very, 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 very clean. And you're thinking, Andy, I've got all these other options. Why would I use this super, super basic program? Because it's super, super basic. That's why. Because if you want to write more and be distracted less, then you should probably consider using something like text edit or notepad. It's words. It's sentences. It's paragraphs. It's writing. So consider using it. Now, where it falls short is the integration. You get about a six because it's just not, doesn't really integrate with really much of anything. I mean, you can save your files to Dropbox, but you know you can't jump to another computer and pick up those files unless you use another service like Dropbox. 
Uh, so you know, integrations, you know, it's not it's it's not great unless you use another service. The value, you know, probably a seven, even if it's free, but it doesn't sync across multiple devices. And I, I think there's better options if you spend a little bit of money. But don't use the fact you don't have any money on your writing programs to as an excuse because you can just use the built-in ones, Notepad or Text Edit. The next we're going to talk about is Evernote. Now, understand that there are two views to Evernote. One is the web view, and then there's the, you know, the view on your desktop using you know whatever program you happen to be, uh, whether it's a Mac or a PC. So just know that you've got those different views, and those are important. When we talk about the first score, which is distraction-free, it, it, you can have a distraction-free window when you're using the program, uh, you know, just the desktop program. What's also really cool is you can have a really great distraction-free view uh, in the web. So wherever you are, you can open up your Evernote web view. You can go to evernote.com, sign in there, make a new note, and you can make that full screen, which is pretty awesome. So distraction-free, I'd probably get a seven or an eight. Integration, I give it a nine. It's not perfect, but Evernote's gonna sync across all your different devices and computers. So that's why I really, really, really love Evernote. And then the ability to add tags. This is huge. So the ability to tag different notes uh, and, and sync them, connect them through these tags. So if you've got 10 different blog posts or chapters and you have it on this topic, you can search for that tag. And if all of your different notes are tagged with a similar tag, then you can look at them all at the same time, which is really great. So very, very powerful. And without being super distracting, I'm gonna give it a nine. Value, I'd give it an eight. Uh, it would have a 10 if it had a truly distraction-free writing view. I really wish it had that. There's another program called Alter Note, but I'm not going to recommend it. It's got some serious problems with syncing issues, S-Y-N-C, S-Y-N-C-I-N-G, syncing issues. So do not use Alter Note, is my opinion, until it gets those figured out. But it's like a, it's like an alternate program for Evernote. It uses Evernote uh, at its core, but it'll screw up your Evernote notes, so don't use it. But it has a distraction-free writing um, view, which is why I used to use it, but now I don't because it messes up my Evernote notes. So again, Evernote, great value, um, I think, even if you have to pay for it, and I think you should get the paid version. Uh, yearly, Evernote's going to cost you uh, six, seven bucks a month. Uh, I think it's cheaper if you buy the whole year. The next one is Google Docs, distraction-free. I'd give it an eight, but only if you're offline. If you're online, it's like a two because you're inside your Chrome browser using it. And that is way too much temptation for me anyway to go jump over to something else. Integration, I give it about a nine. I mean, Google Docs is phenomenal. It's good. it's even tied into Evernote now. Like you can go into Evernote and you know really easily find and insert a link to a Google Drive document right inside of Evernote. So integration is great across lots of different devices, offline and online. Value, I give it a nine. Maybe a 10. I mean, it's, I would probably give it a 10 if it had better navigation because the concern I have with Google Drive, and it's not my recommended one, just to I'll give, put it right there. It's not, I would not recommend Google Drive as your main place to write because it still depends on a typical file structure. It still looks and kind of acts like, you know, old school file structure within your computer. And, and that's a problem because I just think I want to get to my, I want to get to my content more easily. And I think that it's easier to use something like Evernote or even Byword uh, to get to it. But I, I'd give it a nine. Uh, the next up is Grammarly. Now, Grammarly, you may have never heard of it, but it is what it has in the title, which is it helps you with your grammar. Now, Grammarly is not free. It has uh, some different pricing, uh, which you have to look. And definitely look for a coupon. Um, I may have, I'll try to put a link in the, in the show notes as well to Grammarly. I don't know if I'm an affiliate or not, but if I am, there I am. Uh, but it, it's not the cheapest program. It can cost like 15, 10, 15 bucks a month, but it's more of a service than it is a place to write because what it does is I write somewhere else. I usually write in Byword or Evernote and then I copy and paste over into Grammarly and Grammarly is going to check your grammar and it's phenomenal at that. Like I, It's making me a better writer because I'm seeing what corrections I need to make, but also it's going to catch so many errors that I make. So it's not 100. percent You know, if you misuse a, a certain word here or there, then it, it you know it's not going to catch everything, but it catches a lot. So really encourage you to check out Grammarly. Distraction free. I, I think it is a horrible place. I give it a one on distraction free. 
to just sit there and write in Grammarly because it's going to correct your grammar as you go. And it's totally distracting. So I would not create there. Integrations, probably a five, like it's got a plugin. So when you're writing in your browser, it'll, it'll find you some, it'll find errors. If you're writing inside your WordPress blog, it'll find errors as you write, which is nice. Um, but you know, you have to go into the Grammarly program itself and you have to be online to do that. So that can be kind of distracting. So you can't be like, you know, you can't use Grammarly when you're offline uh, and that's a problem. Uh, so the value is like either a two or an eight. So uh, if you're going to use it as a writing tool, it's a two. If you're going to use it as a grammar checker, it's an eight or a nine. So that's Grammarly. And again, I'll have a link to that in the show notes. Uh, real quick aside, if you're not using Pocket Cast, uh, Pocket C-A-S-T-S, uh, do check them out as your preferred player. Uh, a lot of people are using other ones that I think just are not nearly as good. Pocket Cast is not free. It's not a free app, but it's totally worth it in my opinion. And it, it'll sync across your devices. You can even pay a couple bucks, like a year or something, and you can have it sync to your desktop uh, and keep track of different ones you've starred and things like that. But one of my favorite things about Pocket Cast is the ability to share a specific point in an episode. So if I talked about ByWord next and you're like, I want to remember what he said about ByWord, you could send yourself or someone else a link to a specific part of an episode. So check out Pocket Cast. It's a great app. Uh, back to our list. ByWord is next up. has several different prices based on if it's a desktop or a mobile uh, or iPad or you know um, iPhone app, uh, but uh, ranging from $4 to $12. Distraction-free, I give it a 10. Uh, if you get distracted while you're in ByWord, it's your fault, not ByWords. This program is beautifully designed to be distraction-free. Uh, first, it takes up your entire screen by default. Uh, second, there are no text editing options visible. So you're not going to get like you need to change this uh, or you can go, you know, make this bold and so on and so forth. Like even the text edit, the most basic one is going to have some text editing features visible. Second, it offers the ability to focus on an active line. This is really unique. We haven't talked about this yet e either, uh, but it has this functionality where just the line you're writing on, just that individual line is going to be bold and the rest are going to be kind of grayed out. Or you can do a whole paragraph. Um, you know, darkened and the other ones can be light. It, it just helps you focus. And third, it gives you a word or character count. I just thought of a fourth. Third, it gives you a word or character count at the very bottom so you can kind of see how much you've written. And a fourth is that it gives you the typewriter functionality. And the way typewriters work is that your words always stay in one place and your paper scrolls up. That's the same thing that Byword does. You can turn on the typewriter mode and as you type, the words will go up Right, and the, the line you're writing on will stay in the same place, which is really nice. I like that a lot. Uh, integration, I give it a 10. Um, you know, you can export all of your ByWord documents uh, into Evernote along with tags. Uh, you can post directly to your WordPress blog. Um, these features are amazing. Uh, and actually, I just remembered that Evernote one. I need to remember to do that. So you can be writing in ByWord and then post to your WordPress blog, be writing in ByWord and then send it to Evernote, which is really, really cool. Uh, so I, I would encourage you to check out ByWord for sure. The last thing that I'd say value, it's a 10. Uh, and this is a really, really great program uh, for free writing for your writing. I would check out ByWord. Uh, and I, I'll have links to this in the show notes uh, and go ahead and check out that. It is only available for iOS devices right now. Uh, and I think on Mac. I don't think it's available for PC. Sorry. Ohm Rider is up next, and there's lots of different prices for Ohm Rider. You'll check those out anywhere from six, four, or five dollars. Distraction free. I give it about an eight. It's a lot like Byword, but also has this music in the background, a soothing music, right? Uh, it's pretty cool. And also has typing sounds. So as you type, it can be like like raindrop typing, or it can be like little clinks. It's really really interesting. And it has some really cool backgrounds, some visual backgrounds. So it's trying to create that sort of ohm zen experience for you. It's pretty cool. Like even if you don't end up using it, it's just worth it to try it. They might have a free version as well for you to try out. But uh, they add to the distraction-free feeling, all these features do, because you can really customize your writing experience, the kind of background, um, the size of your font, uh, the font you use, um, the, the colors, the, the sounds, the, the keyboard sounds. It's, it's really great. Uh, it's kind of a weird program, but I think it's pretty interesting. 
integration, give it about a seven. You're going to have to use, uh, you know, Dropbox or iCloud to sync across other devices, but it lacks the ability to kind of post elsewhere. So once you're done there, you have to kind of copy and paste it into Evernote or WordPress, wherever you're, wherever you're going to end up publishing a value. I'd give about an eight. I mean, it, it's pretty fancy. Uh, and so for the same price, you can really get an, you know, a really nice large latte or something. You can get a great writing program. So skip your latte, uh, get a you know simple coffee or a water and go write at Starbucks in this program you just bought. That's OM Writer, O-M-M-W-R-I-T-E-R. The next one up is Scrivener. Scrivener is incredibly, incredibly powerful. Uh, you know, distraction free. It does have a distraction free writing mode. Now to get to, you have to open up the program and open up the, the, the file you want to work in and then open up distraction free. But once you're inside of it, the distraction free, distraction free mode is phenomenal. Um, and, and so, you know, w once you're inside, it's great, but it does take a little bit to get inside of that distraction free integrations. It does save your work every three seconds automatically, which is awesome. But I'm going to get a pretty low on integrations because again, you have to sync it with a Dropbox uh, to, to use it across multiple machines. Another weird thing is if you have your Scrivener file open on another computer and you try to open it elsewhere, it'll just say no. And I've, I had sort of some funky luck with this where I don't feel like it was open on another computer, but it thought it was. Or So it just, just make sure if you use Scrivener on multiple computers, which is allowed under the terms of service, just make sure that uh, you're closing it down on the other one. Uh, their iOS app, iOS app is now out uh, as of, I think, last month, maybe July or August, or July, June or July, uh, July, I think, of 2016. Uh, their iOS app is out, and I've heard good things about it. Uh, but Scrivener is incredibly powerful. It's like 30 or 40 bucks, maybe 40 or 50, uh, but uh, worth every penny. If you want to create a really true, robust book and move around chapters, uh, value... If you're going to write a book, it's like a nine. If you just want to write daily, I would put it lower, like a six, because of all the bells and whistles. So if you can get past the bells and whistles and use it every day, great. I only use Scrivener when I am writing a book uh, and, and assembling a book. And I would say, even to be totally honest, like I hardly use it. Uh, as a place to write, I use it really just more to assemble. So I would actually write in Evernote or ByWord and I'd copy and paste that over in Scrivener. So uh, those are the tools that we're going to be going through. I'm going to actually show you what they look like and how to use them uh, in that free class that I'll be teaching. Listen, people are have you know time zones that range considerably. Uh, and so I have two classes I'm teaching, one at 10 a.m. and one at 9 p.m. Central Time. And so you can find all that information at takepermission.com slash writing tools. And then I'll send you a notice uh, a couple hours, maybe an hour before both classes. Uh, there will be a replay. If you can't make it live, just register and I'll send you a replay. That's takepermission.com slash writing tools to register for that. And if you are listening to this after the class, Go to that page anyway. I probably have a redirect to a replay or something like that. Uh, and I'm also going to talk about on that, during that class, after that class, uh, about a new program I'm starting to help other people build their platform and work for themselves and build their dream and use these great tools for other content creators like you. So I uh, hope you can make that class. Uh, would be interested to hear what tools I didn't talk about that you want me to review what tools did I teach you about that you've never heard of? And which one are you going to use? So you can uh, connect with me at the end. You'll hear a recording uh, when I'm done here. And you can connect with me and, and let me know uh, your feedback. Your, what, are you, what are you going to do? What are you going to do with this information? Uh, and I hope the first thing they'll do is go register for that uh, free class, one of the two free classes. Uh, and that is coming up on Tuesday, August 29th, 30th, something like that. Uh, 2016. All right. Thanks for listening. God bless.